Nine, uh, you've been getting in touch this morning. We've been asking you to tell us uh, the, the poetry which you can remember from when you were at school. John Stevenson is encouraging children to learn to recite poetry by heart for a national competition. Uh, Elizabeth in Carlisle, morning to you, Elizabeth. She gave us a call to say uh, the bit of poetry she remembers. I can't say a long piece because I am so small, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you all. Thank you, Elizabeth. And Rachel on the email, mike.cumbria at bbc.co.uk, says, uh, uh, regarding poetry at school, I really enjoyed it. The, the rhythm and the rhyme, the clever use of words conveying deep emotional concepts really appeals to me. In A-level English, I discovered World War I poetry, and I'm still captivated by it. Much of my enjoyment can be attributed to having teachers who were passionate about poetry. Rachel, thank you for your email this morning. Uh, you have been getting in touch and sharing your poems and your memories of poetry with us, but now it's the turn of the kids because Cumbrious teenagers, as I mentioned, are being invited to memorise and recite poetry by heart for a national competition. The thing is, though, how hard is it to remember a couple of lines and then recite them? probably in front of an audience as well. Well, our reporter, Jenny Dennett, is at Ulverston Victoria High School for us this morning. Morning, Jenny. Good morning, Mike. I have been really impressed by people's recall this morning. I think I have um, outsourced my brain to Google, and the only childhood verse drifting back to me is the Lord's Prayer and the Brownie Guide Promise. Although, actually watching the students drift by this morning and inhaling that tang inside of disinfectant with undertones of trainer, I think you know that tang. Um, uh, bits of Roger McGough were drifting back. I don't know if you remember the one about the nooligans. Uh, he grotted the girl with the grotty hair. That that will, I think, ring a bell to people who went to school in the 80s. But with me, I have people who are thankfully better versed than me. English teacher Alison Smith and students Zeke Rice Gray and Florrie Dobson, who yesterday at 3pm were given Ozymandias by Shelley to learn, and we'll find out how they got on in a moment. Alison, our Education Secretary, Michael Gove, is encouraging children to learn poetry by heart. I mean, is it worth doing? What's the benefits for them? I think that it's worth doing if we don't treat it as an end in itself. Learning poetry by heart is a means to an and um, if we just treat it as let's learn a poem for a competition learn it then we can recite it at birthdays and weddings that isn't a good purpose for learning a poem learning a poem is about getting to know the language getting to appreciate the poem and actually that's more important than just being able to do it as a one-trick pony indeed so it's not a party turn it's about appreciating the verse i mean does it happen in schools anyway aside from this competition it does this competition has highlighted the fact that learning poetry is important but actually this has been happening in schools up and down the land for years and years and years mrs griffin when i was at school had me learn the tiger by william blake and bits of it have been coming back to me while i've been thinking about this this competition it's something that's been happening for years this just puts it back in the public eye and actually makes people understand that this is something that kids actually can do. They're not all just hanging about behind the bus stops. Indeed, they're not. They're here with us, uh, shaking a little, I have to say. <laughs> Florrie Dobson, Zeke, just explain to me how what you've learned and how did you find it? Um, we've learned Ozymandias and uh, we found it quite hard to learn because at first when you read a poem, you you think of one thing and you think it's all about one thing, but then when you look deeper and learn in your lessons um, with the t with the teacher and go through the le uh, go through the poem you realize that it's about more than one thing and that, that it's a lot deeper than you think a lot deeper let's hear it this I think is a challenge to people in power that uh, power is fleeting let's go I stop <laughs> <laughs> I met a traveler from an antique land who says two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert near them on the sand half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell the its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty in despair, nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the long and level sands stretch far away. Well done, that was a marvellous recitation. I can't say it, Michael Gove, I'm sorry about that recitation. Thank you very, very much for joining us this morning. A little bit of literary elevation for you, Mike. Tell you, we all need a bit of that as well. That's uh, Jenny Dennett. Thank you very much indeed, Jenny. Uh, a couple of things just to wrap up business with. Sue in Nevertown, I saw your email late, I'm sorry. You got three out of three on three little dings. 
And uh, from the papers, uh, one or two of, uh, of the headlines which we haven't been able to get to this morning, temperatures are going to plunge and pensioners' energy bills have doubled in seven years. That's what the Daily Mail is talking about this morning. Uh, the Daily Express, pensioners have received a boost after the government's plans to change the way it calculates inflation was scrapped. And uh, from inside a couple of the tabloids, a rather nice story to set you up for the weekend. Paddy McGuinness, comedian, TV presenter, maker Peter Kay, of course, and his wife Christine, are expecting twins. So very soon it's going to be a case of let the belly see the bump. BBC Radio Cumbria. Traffic and travel. Phones on the way next after the latest from Richard. In